Video inspired by this one. Very cool. Check it out. Characters are integral to fictional stuff. I mean, Dungan Romper needs them. Even the Earth itself needs them. Have you ever seen that one video about the Earth's world building? Anyway, the one game that especially needs them is Genshin Impact. It's kind of the whole appeal of both the story and gameplay, even visuals. Look at the cosplayers. Now, because of how important characters are to Genshin, you'd expect them to be great, right? Well, they are, kinda. Now let's discuss how to make a character first. It'll help for later. Also, subscribe. I'm back from my hiatus and want to experiment. If you like experiments, me, or even YouTube as a whole, subscribe please. To me, character design as a whole comes from three things, like a triad of sorts. If all three of these things are good, then you're probably in your bag with whoever you're making. Let's visualize this as a triangle, with the bottom left corner being character design. Character design, depending on what medium, could be many things. However, we're focusing on Genshin Impact today, and character design in that context is their physical design and audio design. By that, I mean their outfit, looks, and voice acting. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as- If you're wondering why I'm not including personality here, well, I don't know. I could consider it either writing or design. There's a lot of crossover in the triad, but I wouldn't call that bad, right? Genshin is known for its outfits and looks. Instant classics like Raiden Shogun, Farina, Arlecchino, Yutao, or Tartaglia all have iconic designs and even silhouettes. While not every character follows this philosophy, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure creator Hirohiko Araki takes the cake with character design, having a big focus on silhouette as part of what makes his designs pop. D4C or Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap is a good example of this, with the big ears. Weird, but cool. Characters like Scatamouche and Farina have this same focus, with bits of hair or certain accessories making or breaking their overall shape. Even Jane Doe from Zamla Zone Zero focuses on shape, but in a different way. <clears throat> a good character has a distinct, recognizable silhouette, as well as good use of color theory, thirds, shape, and a lot of things. Did I tell you I'm not a character designer? I'm not a designer at all. I just compose funny songs. I don't even do visual arts. However, the main takeaway from this is that Genshin and Hoyoverse as a whole does that stuff. Voice acting is also very important, and from the limited experience in the English language, sounds pretty damn awesome. There have been controversies with the voice actors in the past and present, but overall there aren't many bad apples. This is talking about the playable characters though. Guess who's a real voice actor and who's being held at gunpoint looking R. Oh my god, I can't believe my eyes. The second of the triad in the right corner of the metaphorical triangle is character lore. This is heavily dependent on the type of character as well as the medium as I said last time. There can be characters that lack backstories but typically some level of world building or connection to the world is helpful. Genshin Impact is good at rolling new characters out partially due to their ties to existing concepts, similar to the effectiveness of an analogy. The familiarity helps bring the new stuff further. Characters coming from existing nations, factions or even being related to other characters always helps. Genshin excels at this, with every character having some level of relation to the game. Even f***ing Mika. He's got a brother. However, finally, the top of the triad, character writing. Ignoring the obvious tidbits of writing in a character's lore, for example, character writing refers to their personality, present and upcoming actions, interactions with other characters ignoring just lore, as well as just being known for more than their likes and dislikes. Rather pathetic to force a conversation just to occupy silence. Genshin is amazing at giving characters depth, like you know their birthdays, favorite foods, disliked foods, opinions on weather, and more. But despite this, they're all really boring and blend together, at least in my eyes. I'd like to add that my eyes are pretty reliable. The characters in Genshin Impact definitely have a level of personality, with Yai Miko being a flirt, Raiden being serious, and Chong Yuan being introverted. I don't like using introvert and extrovert as personality traits because they're more like describing where your energy comes from, but I'm using it this time due to the writer's use of stereotypes when deciding on how their characters act. Neglecting the use of stereotypes, how would you describe the majority of characters? They're all very shallow, but certain people would use their detailed interests and lore as a rebuttal for that argument. I haven't done a single story quest in my life, ignoring Arlequinos, and while you could say that that's probably why I don't know the characters well, I'd have to respectfully disagree. You pick a story quest for three reasons. Either you're bored, have a severe gambling addiction, or 
or you like the character enough to learn more about them. However, what do you do when you don't care enough to learn more about them because their existing traits and screen time don't feel like nearly enough character? The characters lack characterization and desperately need more. I feel like due to the large cast of characters, they tend to personality creep each other as well, primarily because of their stereotypical origins. Let's get into some examples here. The softy girls that are infatuated with the Traveler. We've got Barbara, Ayaka, Nilu, and Lynette to a lesser extent, but come on. Also, Layla. The thing that differentiates them is their occupations and quirks, like Lynette being antisocial, Ayaka following the princess trope, and Layla having that weird split personality thing going on. However, ignoring this, what else is there? Their personalities should be different too, not the same flavor with different toppings, or same text with different font. It goes further with other groups of characters as well, such as the serious, always tall guys, I'm salty, Alhaitham, Zhongli, and New Violets all fall into this, with with even other characters such as Risley at times, or D. Luke. If it's a tall guy, they're nearly guaranteed to be serious. And fun fact, I like these characters, but it's undeniable how similar they all are. Go down. I'd like to mention characters like Yalan and Yaimiko being similar, like come on man. I also enjoy these two, but still. Seriously, what makes this all even worse is the clear pattern confirming the reason for this. It's- let me give you a moment to guess. Drum roll, please. Laziness. You wanna know why? Let's see. Well, more like you'll see considering I already know. There are exceptions from the bad, and they're almost always important characters, showing that they're only putting effort into the characters that they know they'll reuse or hand an important position to. This shows intention behind who they're putting effort into and not, that's why I have a problem with it. Some of these guys do indeed share similarities with other characters, but stick out significantly nonetheless. Firstly, Fatui Harbages! I just want you to understand how many exclamation marks I put after that reveal. Ignore the typo. I'll ignore La Signora because she's only unique because of her role, and and her character is far more similar to the other tall women that are slightly condescending. Anyway, first is Tartalia, a funny yet powerful and bloodthirsty flirt. Already the powerful and bloodthirsty traits set a distinction from the other characters, with these being more than just a word taped over him, but something that is highlighted often during his screen time. Characters similar to him is Linny, but they're both different enough for this to go unnoticed, with Linny's more unique traits being his love for magic that actually has a purpose. A trait without purpose is Layla and Sayu's sleepiness. What more does it do besides make them look a bit cuter in some people's eyes? Nothing. That's the answer. If you can't think of a character's unique personality traits, try to make their existing depth more important by emphasizing it. Scatamouche is good because despite his similarities to Zhao, he's not a hardcore hero type and he's real. He's selfish and shows off his negatives like child. Detore does the same, being the worst of the bunch, while sharing some traits with other tall men. He's very different due to his sickening worldviews and being very efficiently characterized to the worldviews. Arlequino, while originally boring to me in the Fontaine Archon quests, became far more interesting when she too became real. The Archons are also usually pretty unique, excluding Zhongli and Raiden and maybe Mother Weaker so far. I won't say too much on those since so far I like her. That's just a possibility. Venti is unique because of how irresponsible he is and he's also shown in quite a negative light to the point where most people despise the guy. Nahida is the only cutesy character who is very smart simultaneously. Unless you want to count characters like Siege Wing or whatever, but meh. With an actually interesting story of an inexperienced yet responsible character stepping up into the big boots of an Archon, Farina is undeniably unique, with her interests and experiences shaping who she is in a very believable way, showing what it's like to build the triad smoothly, connecting all three triangles to form a very lovable character. This is coming from somebody who doesn't even care for her all that much. Her negatives are highlighted, and she's redeemed in a believable manner. Now, if my yapping wasn't incoherent, Coherent, you'd probably notice that majority of these decent- wait. I forgot to mention Arataki Ito. Ito was and still is one of the best examples of a well-written character, with a duality that allows Paimon to also shine more as a decently likable character instead of an inevitably obnoxious one. Okay, now, if my yapping wasn't incoherent, you'd probably notice that majority of these decent characters all have one thing in common. Excluding Nahida, they aren't just portrayed positively. Here's another thing, nuance. 
Am I using that word correctly? Let me check. Okay, I kind of am using it correctly. We'll roll with it. Characters are always shown way too positively, peacefully or harmlessly. There's almost no character conflict unless you're looking at Itazuma. Some of Sumeru, oh, well, that, that's effectively it. Every character has to be a decent human being unless they're Scatamouche or something. And this also severely limits the room for character growth within the cast. This also contributes to why I don't care for a lot of characters. What's gonna happen? Nothing, meaningful at least. There's multiple ways you can achieve this interesting negativity well. Firstly, you can be awful. Look at Scatamouche and Dottore, for example. They're mainly bad people that are shown in bad ways, which is ironically a good thing. Two negatives are making a positive. Love algebra. Secondly, a good character is portrayed a little negatively. Ito, Venti, and Farina all follow this rule, with characters like Farina letting it be a part of their growth. However, while there are do's, there are don'ts as well. Look at Raiden Shogun. Uh, an awful character who, while she does grow, is immediately thrown into a positive slot before she even finishes her arc leaving a sour taste in my mouth. Also characters like Zhao, which I, while I guess aren't objectively bad, do annoy me due to their cringy R emo trope. I don't care if you hate yourself, portray it as an actual bad thing, not a misunderstood good thing. Come on, Hoyo, be for real. So to make a summary, bad is bad and good as bad are good. Bad is good and good are good are boring, but the latter can work most of the time. This just too much of it in Genshin specifically. I think it's kind of clear how to fix all of this. Here's a basic run down of it all. To fix the problem with characters, we can refer to something like Arlequino's fix, as well as the fix for a lot of characters and shows, funnily enough. Give some more imperfections and negatives to existing characters, and new characters alike. Fontaine did this a little with characters like Linny and even Navia, as the Traveler was done with everyone's crap. Inazuma did this a little as well with the character conflicts, and it goes to show why these two nations feel more moody than the others. If the character doesn't need or shouldn't have these changes, then the next best choice is simply more uniqueness and more clear characterization. Instead of telling you what they like, do, act like, and dislike, show it. Showing is always better than telling in almost any circumstance, especially in stories and video games. Little extra note, Sumeru is a great place to look at when considering playable character interaction and at least banter as well as multiple personality traits. Sino is characterized well for his card game interests, Alhatham's personality reinforces his reserved interests, Tainari is always doing something plant related, and Kafe is just kind of funny, also really bullyable. Kole is a very 3D character as well and covers the Lord Apartment well. While most filler Sumeru characters from the later versions are mediocre at best, they do still get plenty of interaction with each other. However, don't neglect the other two parts of the triangle. Those are very cool and important. Here's a lesson for anybody still watching. Just because you can or have fixed one problem, don't forget the others. Learned to commit to a relationship, don't assume that's all. There's plenty more hardships and it's the same with the character design. See, I used an analogy. That's why it's good to give your characters a connection to existing concepts. Peace out, gang. Oh, and uh, like and subscribe. And I was gonna mention, to put it even more simply than I've already said, just bringing variety to your characters is a good idea and there's not much variety. Anyway, bye.